Hi, Judy from Witch Peace Craft, welcome. Today I thought I'd share with you my whip wind up, hashtag catch up, finished objects, a bit of this, a bit of that, and a little happy mail. So let's get started. First off, my happy mail. I got a beautiful thank you card from Karen Allard. Um, she actually took the photo of the nasturtiums on this front of this card in May. Isn't that awesome? I love nasturtiums. Um, I can't grow them down here in the tropics, but we can grow them up on the tablelands where it's a lot cooler and they thrive up there. But I love all the colours they come in and they are really nice, the flowers, in salads, believe it or not. You can actually eat the flowers. Thank you, Karen, for your lovely words. And the lovely card it is greatly appreciated she sent me the thank you card because i organized a small gift from rose likes crochets etsy shop and rose did an absolute awesome job of the gift sending it to her so i have to thank rose for that it was really lovely of her it is an economical way for me to send the gift in the u.s to buy something from a u.s etsy shop and get them to uh, mail it locally because it keeps the cost down quite a bit and yeah I'll put a link to Rose Lights Crochet's Etsy shop in the description below below this video sorry and make sure you check it out even if you just favorite some of her items in a shop it really helps and thank you Karen for such a lovely card it really made my day so first off the rank hashtag Amigurumi Wars 2023 winding up a whip so may really took it out of me um hosting my amigurumi wars i sort of lost my ammo mojo for a bit but i did start something and due to my own fault i hit a speed bump so i'll show you what i was making i was going to do or do the tuna fun Ta -da! This is a paid for pattern on Ravelry that Thing bought for me. It's by Lucy Collins. I'm pretty sure that's who it is. And you can make large or small tuna fins. My speed bump was I decided I would make the small when I went shopping in my stash, another hashtag, Epset, and I picked the yarn and I started making it. Epset, I realized. I was making the large and I did not have a second ball of this yarn and I was going to run out. So the yarn I picked was Olympus Double Knit, which is 100% acrylic, 8 ply or 3 weight. Um, the pattern uses King Cole DK, which we don't get here. And that was the colour I picked, pinks and orange. But I only had one ball. And it wasn't going to do the two different limbs, especially in the large. So then I sort of put it aside and he sat there with a body and no limbs for quite some time. And Ribs helped me out. He shot my stash and he picked what he thought would help to finish this amigurumi off. So here it is, hot pink with glitter. Now, believe it or not, this is so soft. This is such beautiful yarn. I bought this years ago at an underground railway station little shop in Helsinki. Yes, Helsinki. I bought this and another ball in orange. Now, they are 100 gram balls with 320 meters, 65% acrylic, 30% polyamide, 5% polyester. That's about as much English I can get off the label. And that's the label. So I have a feeling it's Karatopu yarn. And I can't even remember what I paid. But that's the other ball I have in the orange. But he felt the pink went better. So here is my finished two different. Ta-da! Now, I don't think I did the trunk quite right. I think I've overfilled it because it's not sitting as flat as it should. His ears aren't perfect, but he's pretty cute and it's really simple to make all this is one piece including the inside of the trunk and then you make the legs the ears and a very easy tail so yeah very good value for money for a paid for pattern my two different now do you want to see what i did that, here what i did that was different you ready for it 
I put a squeaker inside of him that I got from um, Spotlight, a craft shop. So he actually does toot because he's a tootifant. He's very cute and here will be my entry for Amigurumi Wars May 2023 which is being hosted by Leslie of the Corn. So make sure you check out her channel and give her some love. Leslie of the Corn is ho hosting May's... Um, June's, sorry, Amigurumi Wars. I really like him. I would like to make another one and I thought what I would do is, just before I head over to the UK, I might do a little wool house, wool warehouse order who has this yarn and get it delivered to my son's place in London. So that is my first finished object, hashtag Amigurumi Wars, winding up a whip that sat there for a while. So next off the rank is, of course, Bod had a Palooza. Now, I was a little behind, and I have a story to say, which I'll tell you about later. But first off, I made the easy crochet beanie with buttons. Now, on Crystal's tutorial, it's hashtag 194, easy crochet beanie with buttons. And this is the one I made. Now... I made it in um, Karen Simply Soft Camo, and it's Snow Camo, this colour. The only thing I don't like and I may change is these buttons I put on it. I think they sit up too high. I think they should be flatter. It's a very small head, my doll, but it does look nice on. So that was the first Bod Hatter Palooza Beanie I have finished. In between that one and the next one was... A headband in houndstooth and a conge like frilly hat that wasn't suitable for what I'm doing at the moment so I didn't make them I gave myself a break this week's was this one and this one is the V stitch Charles beanie on crystals to toilet bag a day it's hashtag 263 now she actually used because that's what I have left in my camo two strands of this yarn together to crochet the v-stitch beanie but i decided i would use wool ease tonal because i really like this red which is 80 percent acrylic 20 percent wool in the color vermilion and there are 113 grams in the ball and i use 63 to make this little hat now my question to you is crystal puts a flower on it the same color as the hat and I can't decide whether to do a pom-pom or a flower or do, as Reeves suggested, a flower in a different colour. Let me know in the comments what do you think. Should I just leave it? Should I give it a pom-pom? Or should I do a flower? Or should I do a flower in a different colour? As you can see, I still have yarn left over. But I do like this and it turned out really well. Um, a 6mm crochet hook using, and the Woolies is a 5 weight. So I figured that was pretty good too. Right, why am I just making beanies? Well, I did do a short video, which I'll put somewhere in the here, on beanies. What came about was my boss at lunchtime was listening to a national broadcaster broadcasting from Brisbane, and they put, out, put a call out for knitted or handmade beanies to be sent to them to donate for charity. It's quite gets quite cold down in Brisbane. And he said, do you make beanies? You got any you want to send? And I said, a tub full. So I came home and I was sorting through crocheted, knitted beanies, adult to child size, giving them a good variety. I worked out a kilo of beanies would cost me $20 in packaging and postage. And I sent 15 beanies to them. Now, what really surprised me with was the presenter who does the radio show actually rang me to personally thank me for the beanies to tell me it was a generous gift and they were really nice and she would be distributing them to charities that would give them away so that's kind of touching because I've had a, a couple of thank you notes but to get a personal call from the radio presenter was really nice so then something came about the next day my boss asked me what do you think making those beanies cost you what did it how long did it take your materials well, in my old job, where you have 
poker machines, one arm bandits, what have you. You have a moral obligation to donate $2,000 per machine back to the community, whether it be in cash or in kind. So if you had 16 machines in the year, you should donate $32,000 in cash or in kind. So I used to have to keep a spreadsheet for everything and there was a formula for in kind. So basically, I worked out Knitted hats, beanies take a bit longer than crocheted. So average 2.5 hours per beanie at 15 hats. You then use the minimum wage rate. So whatever your minimum wage rate is, you multiply that out. Work out your cost of goods. For me, my cost of goods was quite low. Some of the yarn was donated to me or gifted to me. And some of it I got very um, inexpensive on sale. So then, and postage and packaging was $20. So 15 beanies in kind, if you want to give a dollar value, is roughly close to $1,000. So there you go. Some people go, oh, I can't donate cash. I'll just have to donate the uh, something I've made. Don't ever feel that what you donate isn't sufficient. Because if you worked out the dollar value of what you were donating, you'd be quite surprised. You know, Rose Lakes Crochet does wings and they get lots of donations. And I'm blown away because I imagine the money involved in making those items and the time is quite a bit each year. That's why she's always appreciative when she gets things donated for wings. I'll put a link to her channel also. Yes, I am a fan of Rose Lakes Crochet. So there you go. That's just a little exercise if you ever want to uh, work out what you're donating and give it a dollar value and really feel good about the products you make and donate to charity or to even gift to friends. So I am going to continue with Bod Hatterpalooza, which is with Laura from Mad Mimi's Farming and Crochet. Make sure you check out her channel. And yes, I'll probably do the beanies. Hopefully no headbands come up or hats that aren't suitable for for what I want I'll just do I'll give myself a break and just do the beanies but I do like the bod hatapalooza it's been really a lot of fun and exploring all the different tutorials Crystal has done is truly amazing so then next off the rank hashtag luck of the draw seven has come to an end luck of the draw with Nan's next knots this is my finished Black gan. You won't be able to see it all here. I've put a border on it. Um, I'll have a photo at the end so you can check it out. I use Spotlight, a local yarn shop yarn here, eight ply or three weight, marble, eight ply, all in their green colours. Um, this main the main colour and the border was actually Red Heart Soft which is a little thinner but helps shape the blanket. Now the pattern I used, it's a bag o day stitch tutorial called Ocean Waves. I like this because you get the same effect on both sides. Look at that. It's the same reversible. You can make scarves, blankets. This is a lovely stitch pattern. So check out the tutorial. I'll put a link to that in the description below. But I have finished my luck of the draw, Black Gan. Ta da! Hashtag whip wind up. So that brings me to my hashtag and make along. Yarn Vacation AU is coming to a close. We have traveled for six months and it's been awesome and a lot of fun and some really great comments that make me laugh touch my heart it's been so much fun and today is the first of july and i am closing it at midnight tonight i extended it a bit for everybody in the northern hemisphere uh, well 11 59 midnight time first of july eastern standard time australia and i plan to do the draw sometime on the second i think it's the first today or is it the 30th i don't know i'm confused anyway it's closing finally for the six months winding it all up 11 59 1st of july eastern standard time australia and i will do prize draws 
on the 2nd of July at some time. I'll do a video. Now, don't forget to post your pictures for June. There's still a monthly participant prize of a $25 gift voucher to be won. Then the major prize for the six months of people who entered and were eligible. I've been looking for ideas. I will do another six month make along next year. I've had a few emails come in with some interesting ideas that I'm going to research and see if I can make them work. Um, but hopefully I'll suddenly get, that's what we're gonna do. That will be next year's make along. And this isn't the end of my make alongs. I will do random make alongs that may run for a month like in September or October with some prizes, participant prizes for people who just want to take part and go into a random draw and have some fun and be inspired with the make along I come up with for that month. The six months was perfect. It worked out really well. 12 months, you know, even six months starts to drag off at the end, but 12 months last year really was a long time. So there you have it. Yarn Vacation Hey You. Broomstick Airways goes out of business tonight at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Australia. Thank you to everyone who's participated. You can't believe how much fun I've had. So what else have I got now? On a sad note, a month ago I gave away a draw for a mystery box of... Um, yarn bits of things here it's been a month and it hasn't been cleaned i even left a comment under their comment and they still haven't claimed it so i assume they don't want it and today i am going to redraw it so what i will do at the end of this video i'll put all the names back on the wheel and do a random draw and there'll be a video at the end of this of the new winner for my mystery birthday box They'll have some yarn, some fun stuff, maybe some Aussie snacks. Who knows? Let me know. Remember, it was open worldwide. So whoever wins it, that's where it's going. All I ask is you email me and claim it within seven days of this video going to air. Because so after that, if no one claims it, I'll just put it aside for another make along. Because to be honest, a month is a long time to wait for someone to claim a prize. So what else have I got? Whips. I don't normally talk about whips, but I am excited. I am making Emma's shoes. And it has been challenging on my hands because it's quite hard. So, And I'm making two at once so that they match perfectly. And yet again, I didn't work out the yarn. I have to go to Spotlight and buy some more yarn. I'm hoping they have a weekend flash thing where they put it 30% off and I get it a bit cheaper. But so far, so good. And I must thank Janet Lepre for her email and the tip on the tutorial that she gave me and the photo she sent me of her shoes she made for her grandchildren. Because believe me, the pattern I chose was fine, except I, could, I can adapt most patterns, but I could not get this to work out to a smaller size to fit Emma. And the tutorial Janet gave me is working out perfect. So make sure you stay tuned to the channel. I'll tell you the tutorial and show you the shoes when they're finished and hopefully we'll get a photo of Emma modeling them. There'll be some photos at the ends of my make alongs that I've done and my hashtags. I've had a lot of fun with the hashtags. And guess what? <laughs> This behind me, this pile, is my whips. Now, I had 16 whips. I'm down to 12. I did frog one. I decided it has sat there for two years with only 10% of it done. It was very involved crochet pattern, and I thought, you know what? I can't get motivated, so I frogged it and put the yarn away. So I have 12 whips at the moment. The idea being... <laughs> So I was to get the whips down before I go on holidays in August to the UK. However, there is a new make along that's starting on the 1st of July with Ruth Loves to Knit in the UK. Make sure you check it out. Dust off your, dust off your mouth, I think it is. Dust off your mouth. Basically, 
you've got patterns or pattern books you've had for years and there's been things in there you bought the, them because you wanted to make them. So you pick an old pattern. I, I can't remember if you had to have it before the 20, July the 1st, 23 or 22. Make sure you check out her video. But I have, I have found this morning two patterns and I had the yarns in the bag ready to go that I'm going to do. So my whip pile is going back to 14. They're both knitted patterns. One is quite involved. Actually, they're both quite involved and that's probably why I've hesitated. Could you hold on a minute? Sorry about that. My smoke alarms have been playing up. They've been beeping. The one in um, the other bedroom went off at five in the morning yesterday for no reason. So I must get them checked because things not here to check them for me. He is, for those of us, having a lot of fun in Spain. He did two weeks of hard work and then he went and stayed. I think he booked an Airbnb for the first time ever. And um, it had a beautiful balcony with an ocean view. He sent me photos of him eating fresh mussels, drinking wine, overlooking the waterfront in a restaurant. That was his lunch. So I sent him a photo of me eating a sandwich at my desk, looking out the glass door on the hallway, because that's the only view I have. They're the sort of funny things we do. We had a bit of a laugh about it last night on WhatsApp. He's currently now on his way to a desert in Spain where he will be volunteering at a festival. He had to do, and he did it online while he was in his Airbnb thing, um, a food handling certificate, which I have. Um, the last time he volunteered, it wasn't needed, but this time he had to do it. And it was all UK based, which really surprised him, but he's quite proud of himself because he, he passed it with very high marks. And yes, he goes and volunteers at this festival. He helps set up, he goes for two weeks and he works in the kitchen because they do like him in the kitchen. I've got him well trained. He's a good sous chef. So yes, he rang um, yesterday, last night on his way there and um, yeah, he's looking forward to it because it's a little different from building. It's, you know, kitchen work, helping set up. Sometimes his job is to go around and check all the water things are all full and yeah, he just likes it. So, and he, he really enjoys meeting people over there. So yes, thing is having a ball. I do not have as much crafting time because I'm having to pick up his chores. And Saxon has been playing up besides destroying a craft project because he never, my craft stuff is nowhere near a pet can get at it. Uh, into it there's no pet hair and how he got it that was my own silly fault after coming home from crochet for cancer just dropping it on a chair same as my uh, luck of the draw seven I left the card out somewhere low and he had a nice old chomp on it same as the carrot topu yarn I had a ball band for the pink and somehow he got hold of that and chewed it up. That's to let me know. He's not happy that things not here to play with him every day. Even though I am taking him to the beach for walks. That's my naughty little dog. Anyway guys, make sure you check out the video at the end to see who the redraw winner is for the birthday mystery box. And I hope you've enjoyed all my make-alongs, hashtags. And I hope you stay tuned to the channel and check out the future make-alongs, you know, little ones that I do. I've got a lot on my plate and a lot planned for the second half of the year. Stay well, stay safe, and make sure you contemplate making a snake. It was fun, hey. I've made two now. I've nearly finished the second one. There you go. Bye for now. It's time for me and Trev the Travelling Snake to do the Mystery Box Birthday Giveaway Redraw. 24 names on the wheel. Good luck, everyone.
Anita Sinner. Anita and and Vita Sinner. Sorry, if you could give me an email, and we can arrange to send that to you. Congratulations, you won the redraw. Thank you for participating, everyone. Bye for now.